Next up, we have Amalgamated Vision. Adam Davis will be presenting. Thanks, Asher. Can you hear me? Yep, loud and clear. Great. And can you see my screen? Yes, but it's not in present presentation mode. It's just a... Okay. Just about to go there. Perfect. And a shout out to Brian. Thank you very much. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Adam Davis. I'm the CEO of Amalgamated Vision, and I want to thank you all for being here today. So what we're looking at is a state of the art of helmet display for the most expensive and the most advanced aircraft in the world. But in 2017 and 2020 and 2021, three near fatal crashes occurred and they were attributed in part to helmet display failure. Since 2012, the pilots have reported being unable to understand their surroundings due to disorientation or visual obscuration from the helmet display. On the top image, we see an F-35 helmet with the green light illuminating the pilot's face. And below is a video presented by the US Navy of a pilot attempting to land on an aircraft carrier during low light conditions. In each of these serious incidents, the electro optics were found to be operating exactly as designed. So the question is, how do we explain this? And I think what we are seeing is the underlying problem of see-through display itself. Anyone familiar with augmented display knows that spatial computing, wearable, portable, digital display that interacts in real time with the surrounding environment is the future of information. But the largest tech companies in the world are failing to deliver successful products for industry, healthcare, consumers, or defense. HMD is bulky, it's uncomfortable, and it's aesthetically unacceptable, and image quality is poor. As a result, a huge industrial and consumer market goes untapped, an army order is lost, a large investment in 5G by the telecommunications companies goes unused. And the reason for this problem is wrong optics, waveguide or combiner screens that insert data and graphics between the user and the world around them is distracting and it's confusing and it's particularly dangerous in high risk maneuvers in uncontrolled situations. And at Amalgamated Vision, we wanna change that. AV is an optical design company creating light engines for the future of head-mounted display. Our tech is not waveguide, it's not combiner, and it is not see-through. Our virtual retinal display is created by an incredibly small and compact optical engine driven by laser light, and it moves through a unique optical design. No other wearable display uses this approach. The images are projected directly into your eye. There is no screen. Our technology completely changes the idea of what head-mounted display should be. Complete environmental and situational awareness, high resolution, high quality images, a wide 50 degree diagonal field of view, lightweight and compact for true portability, superior ergonomics and consumers, most importantly, aesthetically right. And lastly, extremely bright, you can see it in outdoor sunlight. AV, well, excuse me. AV user experience is radically different from all the other VR, AR displays, and we can build two form factors. Here we see our binocular form factor. There we go. Here we see our binocular form factor, and it's being used in several different scenarios. It produces a rich 2D or 3D stereoscopic information in a position beneath the user's normal line of sight. The surgeon can clearly see the surgical field and only when needed look down to see the relevant radiographic information. Her view of the patient is not obscured. Our monocular form factor creates a first of its kind user experience. The extremely compact size allows the soldier to wear the device at the inner corner of one eye adjacent to the nose. One eye sees the display, the other does not. His brain fuses the input from the two eyes so the information is overlaid in his normal visual field, but the environment is not obstructed. Depending upon where he looks or directs his attention, the display will be completely inconspicuous or plainly visible. Our intellectual property is protected by four US patents and in 2020, amalgamated one, the NASA iTech Innovation Competition. Augmented, augmented reality user needs can be classified along two axes, by their degree of data complexity and by the user's need to be present in their environment. 
Today's leading HMD products typically only serve one class of user cases, depending upon what the manufacturer intends to do with it or the limitations of the optics inside. The AV optical engine is an enabling core technology. It can power any of these experiences and it excels at the most difficult data intensive tasks while still ensuring a non-obstructed view of the world. Our technology has wide commercial applications. The potential market for industrial and consumer products alone is estimated to be $20 billion by 2026. Our preferred business model, AB Inside. We intend to license our technology to strategic partners in the consumer electronics, telecommunications, healthcare, and defense industries to place their applications inside their specific application eyewear. AV has raised $1.4 million to date, including income from a customer who paid us to complete the design for our optical engine. We're ready to build the prototype now, and you can be ready in seven months. We are asking for $1.9 million to complete the build out and obtain relationships with strategic partners. The AB team is our greatest asset. Our engineers are among the best in the world at optomechanical design for head mounted display. Our business legal and administrative team is highly experienced. In conclusion, AV is ready to change the landscape of head mounted display, and we're actively seeking partners. And we really hope that you are interested and that you guys will join us. Thanks very much. Happy to answer any questions you may have. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you so much, Adam. All right, without further ado. Corey, go right ahead. Thanks, uh, great briefing. I do have a couple of questions over with regards to the certification processes for this, since it would be in the aviation community, a pilotage and navigation source of information. How are you going about dealing with one, the FDA for you know clearances associated with shooting light into your eyeball and then two, like DO-178 Charlie for software safety for pilotage of aircraft for airworthiness release, over. Okay, so um, laser light power uh, is always a concern, like, like any light source. Uh, if uh, not used correctly, it can be damaging to the eye. Uh, but the interesting thing about our optics is that um, they would normally not be used for a, uh, an LED or micro LED display because they're relatively inefficient. We use a pancake lens and there's a lot of light loss. Uh, but for us using laser light, that's an advantage because we are actively trying to remove 95% of our light. Our current module is designed to be 3000 nits and that makes it a class one laser utilized in all situations uh, without, uh, without any restrictions. So when we apply for regulatory clearance, we will be applying as class one laser light, class one laser product. I'm gonna jump. Um, thank you so much. Quick question for you. For the 1.9 million you're seeking to raise, help me understand what other resources or hurdles exist for you to complete development of your product and get to a production ready product this year. If you cut us a check today, we would have a working uh, prototype in seven months. We've already finished the detailed design phase. We currently have no uh, uh, regulatory or legal restrictions or any kind of encumberment to moving directly into building uh, the prototype. And do you have customers lined up that would be ready to prototype that capability this year? Uh, that's Yes, actually, there are companies uh, in the telecommunications, in the electronics business, uh, in the defense industry, uh, who we have spoken to have told us that they are waiting to see our proof of concept. They are very interested in an extremely small, uh, portable, lightweight optical engine for head mounted display. Okay, thank you. Awesome, awesome. Next up, we have Martina. Um, that was a great presentation. I really enjoyed it. Um, I am interested, um, how many changes did your patent um, went through? You said four. Did you have any functional working prototypes that you changed over time, or was it just a conceptual thing? Uh, it was conceptual all the way through. Um, our patents are for two things. It's interesting. Optical design, of course, but also form factor. 
we patented the idea of taking a, a, a laser MEMS, which is a well-established technology, passing it through optics with a diffuser to increase the exit pupil so that there's a wide sweet spot for the eye to see and keeping that within 16 millimeters of the eye. That ultra near position, that form factor is part of our patent claims that were granted. Thank you, Adam. Yeah, I, I can't figure out how to raise my hand in this thing, so I'm just going to jump in. Um, <laughs> Shout sure. out. Yeah. So, in terms of your your go to market, how how are you thinking about the defense side? Just as like a a comment, like you know, on, on space, I'm not sure I'd go after like the the pilot, you know, opportunity well, right off the bat. Right, there's probably easy like lower hanging, less challenging uh, use cases to to start with. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah uh, absolutely, absolutely. The I mean, the military is demanding. Of course, um, there are tremendous opportunities in the military. Uh, the best example is that the um, uh, the IBIS, the augmented display for soldiers, that uh, which was being supplied by uh, Microsoft, the Hololens system, that's you know that has been faltering and that is in that is in jeopardy. So um, you know the opportunity within the military is 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 wide open. But as you said, that's a tough nut to crack right out. You know it, it's funny that the the largest. Uh, applications for this. The really deep pocket is industry, and they're going to probably be the first uh, uh, the first adopters of this. Uh, warehouse workers, they need hands-free, wearable, portable display so that they can move things from shelves. And efficiency of warehouse workers uh, is essential for, you know, large distribution companies for Amazon and FedEx, UPS, and you know, all of those companies. So, you know, as a go-to market commercial, you know those lower demand, uh, uh, those lower demand applications uh, would probably be almost easier than moving into the military. But remember, this is a new emerging technology, so very often it's the military that kind of supports that kind of novel, that kind of novel technology. And yeah. within the military, it doesn't even need to be a warfighter. That's what comes to people's minds. Uh, but for uh, mechanics and engineers, when they're fixing things and they need those schematics. And they need to use both hands. That's a great application. So I, I, I'd recommend like reaching out to Natick Soldier, Soldier Center, right? Like they're they're probably the, the part of the Army Lab System that'd be um, particularly interested. Uh, and then uh, they're going to be elements of SOCOM that are going to be particularly interested, right? Like Softworks might be an easy point of entry to just like start having conversations and start kind of get oriented on those end users' needs. Uh, yeah, neat stuff. Thank you. Khan, you have the last question, all right? Sure. Thank you. I'll make it quick. Thank you. Hey, Adam, um, good presentation, good technology. I actually love it. Um, I know um, you mentioned that uh, your customer pay for uh, R&D or development. Are you um, uh, in any kind of restriction with uh, ITAR field? Like if you, are you li at liberty to uh, uh, say, let's say you, if you actually develop product and uh, sell the license to uh, an uh, on foreign entity uh, friendly to USA, of course. But no, we we have no restriction. And the interesting thing is, our customer, um, of course, they want our technology, but they also recognized that the, there was no market leader in the field, and that this field was having failure to launch. So they put no restrictions on us and encouraged us to sell to as many people as possible in order to try to stimulate the head-mounted display field. Our customer is a data analytics company. And what they do is they take uh, disparate types of data and bring it together into one visual experience. And they realized that they didn't ha quite have the display system that they needed. So they're actively trying to encourage the data display. So no, we have no restriction for any customer in any vertical. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome, thank you so much, Adam. Um, be sure to leave your contact information in the chat. That was fantastic. Um, so next up, we have Tip and Q. 